Here's the problem. My CNC table takes up too much space. I want to store it on the wall, but it weighs 150 pounds. So I'm going to try to build a 3D printed winch to lift it into place. Keep watching if you want to see if it actually works. Welcome to the channel. If you're a regular, you might remember this CNC table it used to be in my workshop, but I had to move it to make space for other machines. I didn't want to completely disassemble it because I figured I would probably need to use it again, and I ended up being right. The problem is it's heavy, and it eats up way too much floor space for the amount of time to use it. So what I'm going to try to do is hang it on the wall, that way it's tucked out of the way, but I still can access it when I do need it. The issue is the table can't fold up like a Murphy bed because the CNC would hit against the wall and the whole table would stick out too far. So instead of folding back, the bed needs to slide up on rails so the bottom of the table ends up flush against the wall. This is the first obstacle to figure out. To keep things simple, I'm using steel pipe for the rails. The pipes are half inch thick and I have T-joints at the ends that attach to the table that are three quarters inch so they can slide over the rails. To hold up the front of the table, I'm using some chains that run from the wall to the front corners of the bed. This way I don't need to have folding legs and as the table comes down, it'll automatically flip into place. Now to manually test the setup. One thing I didn't think of was once the bed gets past the pivot points of the chain, there's nothing to stop it from falling against the wall. I'll have to add a strap or something to hold on to the bottom so I can uh, lower it into place. Now let's talk about the design of the winch. Since I used a 6 to 1 pulley system when manually lifting the table, I decided to incorporate that into the total design to uh, lessen the load on the actual winch itself. I could have bought some pulleys, but I decided I might as well make those too, because they're pretty simple. They're just some spacers, some aluminum plates, and some uh, skateboard bearings. So this is what the winch is going to look like. It's a 60 tooth worm gear that's driving two 100 millimeter drums that are actually going to pull the ropes. I went with a split design with two drums where each one is pulling a rope from opposite uh, directions. This way um, the forces are pulling equally on it and it's not trying to pull it off the wall one way or the other. With the table weighing about 150 pounds, each drum is going to be seeing 75 pounds of that weight. And with the 6 to 1 pulleys, it ends up being around 20 pounds of force being applied. With the drums being 100 millimeters, that's going to apply about 10 newton meters of torque to each drum. With the motor I'm using and the worm gear reduction, I'm getting about 27 newton meters, so just a little under three times the amount of torque that I'm going to need. Besides the high gear reduction, another reason I went with the worm gear is that it's a self-locking system, which means uh, when the motor's not driving, the weight of the table pulling down can't back run the gears, so I don't need to add any kind of braking or locking system into it. There is one negative aspect of using a worm gear, but I'm going to talk about that later. All the force bearing 3D printed parts for the build are printed with Sunlu's P12 nylon carbon fiber. It's strong, lightweight, and tough enough to handle the loads without wearing out quickly. Also while printing, the spool was sitting in Sunlu's filament dryer to make sure the nylon stays nice and dry. Step 1 was building the pulleys. For the aluminum parts, I'm using my Carver Air to cut them from 3mm aluminum plate. To hold the plates down, I'm using CA glue and masking tape. The process is pretty simple. You cover both sides with tape, and then you add glue in the middle, and then it bonds both surfaces together. And then when you have to remove it, it's just as easy as uh, pulling the tape off. The nice part of this method is you don't need to use tabs because uh, all the cut pieces will stay secure to the table until you peel them off.
assembly of the pulleys is pretty straightforward. All the parts get stacked together and then locked into place with 5mm bolts. I printed all the winch parts out of PLA first to verify the fit before I moved on to nylon. There was a few other things that needed to be machined out. These will hold the bearings for the drums and they're being cut out of 6mm aluminum plate. I'm going to use heat expansion to lock the bearings into the holders. The holes were cut the same size as the bearings so they just don't quite fit. But I'm going to use this propane torch to heat up the aluminum plate and that's going to cause it to expand just enough that the bearings will be able to fit in and then once they cool down it'll shrink back on the bearing and lock it into place. For the base I wanted to use aluminum but I couldn't find a piece the right size locally so I went with this uh, 12 inch square piece of 6 millimeter steel plate. It was still an inch or so short where the motor mounts, so I just had to attach a little piece at the end. With the base ready, I needed to mark out all the mounting holes to drill. But instead of trying to measure and mark everything by hand, I just let my CNC mark all the spots and then took it to the drill press to drill them out. The worm gear needed a solution to attach to the drive shaft and I didn't want to just use a set screw as all that stress on one point would crack over time so I decided to use a key but I couldn't find an 8mm bar that had a keyway cut into it and the uh, chrome hardened rods I was using would be too hard to mill so I did have a normal 8mm uh, steel rod so we're going to try that and see if that works. All that was left was cutting up some 2020 extruded aluminum length and milling up a few connector plates. Then I could start assembling the winch. While we watch his assembly time lapse, let me tell you about today's sponsor, PCBWay. For this project, I needed to print some strong nylon parts and uh, CNC cut some aluminum plate. Now, maybe you don't have a printer that can handle printing exotic materials, or you don't have access to a CNC machine, and that's where PCB Waste comes in. Their platform makes it easy. Just upload your file, choose from a wide variety of materials from PLA, nylon, even 3D printed metal, and get an instant quote right away. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. So no matter what kind of part you need, they got you covered. And right now, PCBWay is running a special on TPU printing with a discount up to 80% off depending on the weight of your order. It's a perfect chance to try flexible parts if you've never worked with them before. 
So if you need some parts for your next project that you're not able to make at home, uh, check out PCB Way. There'll be a link in the description. Now let's get back to the build. I didn't run the winch very long, but the PLA didn't really hold up very well. It uh, started to melt pretty quick. The only issue seems to be around the worm gear. Everything else uh, seems to work out pretty well. So uh, it's time to move on to final assembly. There's a little bit of dust coming off the worm gear, but that's kind of normal as the gears wear in initially. But the loud metal noise is a little concerning. I slowed the motor down and it definitely sounds like it's coming from the worm gear assembly. There's only so many moving parts here, so uh, I'll have to tear into it and see what I can find out. You can't really hear it on camera, but with everything taken apart and only the bearings and the uh, worm gear shaft, you can still hear that clicking as I spin it, so I'm not really sure what's causing it. It sounds like it's coming from the bearings, but I tried multiple sets and they all made the same noise, so that's kind of weird that they would all act the same way. There doesn't seem to be anything else hitting anywhere, and uh, the noise gets louder when it's under load, and being mounted to the metal plate seems to amplify it, so it's sounding a lot louder than it really is. So I guess uh, I'll just have to live with it. And here's the final assembly with a little bit of accent color added. Now's the time to talk about the negative part of the worm gear I mentioned earlier. Because the worm gear slides past the bigger gear to push it along, 
There's a lot more uh, wear and stress on it than the other gears that are just spinning past each other. This is why the PLA melted so fast due to the friction and the heat. The carbon fiber is holding up very well so far, but I'm still going to add a little bit of grease to it just to uh, add to its longevity. The one issue with using grease in a dusty environment like a garage and an open assembly is that grease will attract all the dust and sawdust in the air and kind of create a sandpaper or lapping paste and over time wear things down. So I made a little dust cover that'll snap on over top that should shield it from most of the stuff in the environment. Now it's time to get the winch mounted and see if it's actually going to work. And here's the final assembly with the wiring done. I have the switch mounted and the wiring running up the cable to the wall. The main uh, control box and power supply is all mounted to the wall. I just have to run power to it. For now, extension cord will do. And then I have uh, the strap added I mentioned earlier. I just need to cut it to length. So now it's time to see if all this time and effort was worth it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little surprised this all worked out so well. There was a lot of moving parts in this project and I wasn't sure if it was all gonna come together. Especially when it uh, got to the part where the winch had to lift the full weight of the table up the wall, um, but it handled it uh, as I hoped it would. If you made it this far in the video, you're awesome. I really appreciate you spending your time uh, watching these projects. I would love to hear your thoughts on the project or how I could have approached it differently. Leave them in the comments below. Early on, I did have the idea of using two big lead screws for the rails. Uh, that would have been a lot simpler to build, but it would have been a lot more expensive too. Start your comment with the word winch, so I know you made it this far. And if you wanted to build this for yourself, or maybe just use some parts of it for uh, a project of your own, um, I'll leave a link in the description for where you can get the Fusion 360 file. And if you like builds like this and want to see more, uh, consider subscribing. And maybe uh, check out my Patreon page if you want to help fund future projects. Thanks for watching.